Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, Earthlings. I'm showing off. I have been missing for a very specific reason, so I thought I'd just uh, sit back in my massive chair. I feel a bit like River, but, but my chair swivels. I don't know if River's swivels. I, I don't think it does. This is more of a throne, isn't it? Right, let's talk about the uh, tour bus and Carl Larson. But before getting into all that, I will explain where I've been. And for later on in the video, I went to the shop today and bought this rather nice parchment paper. These are all blank sheets. There's nothing to read out there. But I bought my daughter, I'll just, I'll show you around the room first because this is what I have been doing all week. I'm sitting in my dark cave sugars. Remember the sugars, the Megan trolls? I, I was sitting down there, that chair wasn't there at the time, in my dark cave and I was crying about my life and now I don't have one, sugars, wasn't I? Right, well... The sugars, because obviously they don't know who the hell I am, they don't know anything about me, just thought I'd fill them in. Welcome to my boat. Welcome to our cave. So this has been on the to-do list for a long time, and I last week I was like a Tasmanian devil, cleaning out every cupboard, and I found so many things. I'll just, this, this is actually quite a good selfie stick. I think it goes taller. Oh, there we go. Um, so I don't have to hold it. Oh, it's like a studio, isn't it? Um, and I found uh, all kinds of things. Graham and I discovered that we could get the spotlights working again. All four. All four. Do you realise... Where's the camera? Oh, there it is. That these four spotlights have not all worked at the same time ever since the day we bought the boat. There's always been one blinking spotlight. Oh, I think I'm on a wobbly bit of floor there. There's always been one spotlight that doesn't work. Did anybody else get that? And of course, Graham got the wrong shade. He got one cold one and the rest are warm. So I've got to get a warm one. But uh, I have fixed my ceiling. As you can see, I've got some nice ruching going on here. I bought a curtain from the Chinos for 15 euros. And I also used, my daughter didn't mind in the end, her wonderful painting that she'd done. I painted over that and used that to fix part of the ceiling. Um, and it's amazing the things that you can find that you'd forgotten that you'd bought. And um, I mean, I painted the ceiling and the floor. Let me show you the floor. I'm really rather proud of this. In fact, I think we'll go down into the galley because I've done the galley as well. <laughs> oh my God. So I painted, I took the red carpet up and I painted the floor this lovely chocolate brown and the paint actually smells of chocolate. And then I bought two very cheap, uh, these round rugs from Amazon. And one of them I cut in half. So I've got a semicircle at the top of the steps here. And let's go and look at my other semicircle. And the other semicircle is at the bottom of those steps, which ultimately will have um, carpet. I think I'll get some pale grey carpet or something. And I bought these blinds. I ordered these blinds ages ago on Amazon. I got them really cheap, uh, four of them. Um, then the deal was it takes forever for them to turn up. And they turned up literally the day I'd finished painting the room. And it may not look like a particularly large room, but believe me, there's a lot of nooks and crannies. I've still got to put tiny bits of, of strip and stuff. I've got, there's always fiddly bits on a boat, but on the whole, I'm very, very pleased with the finished effect and, and I've done all of the kitchen, a little bit of paint on the glass there, I've still got to clean up. And tomorrow I will be covering my red uh, velvet <laughs> kitchen chair covers because, um, well, it was a good, it seemed like a good idea at the time. You know, we have these ideas. But the, the main thing is I have managed to cover the walls as well, both sides of the galley. So, I mean, even my kids are impressed, so I know I've done well. And Steph, 
thank you Steph. Steph sent us a lovely box of, of all kinds of things um, that I think she's actually made. I don't know, they look so professional and I shall be wearing them. They are fibreglass, resin, pendants, there are three of them. And also, and it's so strange because I was in Morrison's today as Graham was finishing up and I saw one of these. It's a, it's a, a wooden bowl with three wicks in it, candles. And you know, I was actually gonna buy one today, but in Morrison's they wanted 25 pounds. And then I went to the post office, got the parcel, and Steph has sent us, and it's it's like wooden carved, and it's just like my fruit bowl. It's it's like, she's psychic. And a load of American chocolate, and you know, all know I don't eat chocolate, and Graham doesn't. And some of the chocolate, I know exactly what they are, but there were some American ones in there, crunchy bars or something, and I tried one, and I don't know if it had salt in it or something, I ate the whole thing. <laughs> you naughty Steph, you're going to get me into chocolate. But no, no, but the kids will enjoy that. So thank you very, very much. And also, uh, it's like a wind chime with bells. One of the bells fell off. That was my fault. Sorry, I will fix that tomorrow. I'm going to have that outside. Thank you, Steph. Thank you. Thank you, all of you who have sent lovely postcards, letters. Thank you so much. And for all your good wishes to us in our dark cave. Now, although I've been uh, fixing up the boat over the last week, I'll tell you what I haven't done. Sugars, this is directed at. I haven't gone on a bitch fest about my family. I haven't complained that I'm not, uh, that I'm surviving but not thriving. I'm actually surviving and thriving, so is Graham. Um, I haven't gone on a privacy tour. I haven't been complaining to everybody about everything, even though I'm able-bodied, so is Graham. We have our health to a large degree. You know, Graham's doing great. Um, that we're able to help ourselves, that we make the best of what we've got. We're not multimillionaires sitting having the biggest whinge fest in history. That's what we have not been doing for the last week. And I tell you what, we very rarely do that. Might have moments of self-pity, but generally speaking, no, we don't do that. And I'll come back to my blank pieces of paper shortly. But first, let me read something out to you that I have just read. And then the blank pieces of paper will all become clear. See, I'm getting quite good at this now, this editing thing. I've still got to do the, how are the state room? They call it the state room. I bought this today, this guy, 20 quid. He's a coconut palm. And my cat loves, oh yeah, let me show you the cat as well, just quickly. I will get to it, I will get to it, guys. I mean, I've been missing a few days, so indulge me. Look at this. The old cushions, I, I was going to throw them out. But a certain person, and, and yes, I do call her, I do call her a person. Say hello, kitty because she, she's a little personality. Um, she just found that spot and she just loves my coconut palm. She loves it. She loves flowers. When we're in the house, she goes around the garden sniffing and looking at all the flowers. It's adorable, it really is. The cat just loves nature. Right, let's get stuck in, shall we? The privacy tour. Carl Larson, who's Carl Larson? Well. I'll just read out the article. I think that's probably the quickest way. It's The Independent, which is a mainstream newspaper in the United Kingdom. Left wing. Very pro Harry and Meghan. Okay, for anybody that doesn't know. It's entitled Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's sightseeing tour led by Thomas Markle's friend sparks outrage over privacy. And it's written by, I want to give credit, Meredith Clark in New York. It was released an hour ago and apparently has one comment. So they must be monitoring the comments on that. I'll put a link in the description. A celebrity sightseeing tour that promises to take passengers. Oh, hang on. Oh, they want me to register now. Oh, hang on. Let me try refreshing the page. An hour ago, it didn't have to register it. Let's see. Yep, I've got it here. 
a celebrity sightseeing tour that promises to take passengers within feet of uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's Montecito home has sparked backlash over privacy concerns. Now, there's a lot of very interesting things in this article and let's pick it apart, shall we, as we go along. The bus tour, advertised as the Royal Celebrity Tour of Los Angeles and Montecito, is being led by photographer Carl Larson, a close friend of Meghan's estranged father, Thomas Markle. Uh, well, he was. I seem to recall the Markle family saying some rather unchristian things about him, and Thomas, I think, regretted doing the YouTube channel with him, and... Hasn't he recently been photographing Meghan and Harry and is more friendly with Meghan and... I don't know, I don't know, Let's we'll, we'll get into that. It does mention a little bit about that. Um, the bus tour, advertised as the Royal Celebrity Tour of Los Angeles and Montecito. How many royals live there? I mean, I guess there are a few. Uh, not that they hold rank in the United States, which is not a monarchy, but I guess there are a few. Um... He's being led by photographer Carl Larson, a close friend of Meghan's estranged father. According to the Mirror, each tour costs $1,200 for a group of six. A listing for the sighting tour first popped up on the site Trippening, which I've never heard of before, where it was advertised alongside a photo of the Duke and Duchess sharing a kiss at a polo match in Santa Barbara. Was, could that have been the one where Carl Larson was the photographer? Not sure. Um, the description for the Royal Celebrity Tour, written by Larson, read. Read. This is not there anymore, apparently. I'm the world-famous celebrity photographer, Carl Larson. Ooh, world-famous. Now, we, we've had a couple of world-famous photographers in the United Kingdom. David Bailey and, of course, the late Lord Snowden, who is married to Princess Margaret. Carl, Carl, he's, you know, he's right up there with, uh, with those guys. Uh, and best friend of Thomas Markle. Oh, he's best friend, is he? Uh, in brackets, Meghan's father. They always have to say things like that in case we don't know who the hell she is or he is. And the guy with a stunning, exclusive portfolio of pictures of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle together in Montecito. Oh, but I thought Meghan wasn't talking to her father. Um, but this guy's best friends with her father, but has an exclusive portfolio of pictures. <laughs> kind of makes me wonder who was behind the setup of the, and it was a setup of Thomas Markle and the Pap Shots. Who was behind that? Anyone involved in that? I, I don't know. I really don't know. Larson described himself as the only person in the world who knows the truth about what happened between Meghan Markle and her father ahead of her marriage to Prince Harry in May 2018. I am the only person who has an open communication pathway between Meghan's camp and the rest of the Markle family, he wrote. There is nobody on the planet that knows more info than me. And I'm the only person that's qualified to put on such a tour. Uh, the listing promised that passengers would get an in-depth tour of where Meghan grew up and the beachside California town where Harry and Meghan and an army of other A-list call home. The tour aims to take tourists to Harry and Meghan's favourite Montecito hangouts, the Santa Barbara Polo and uh, Raquet Rache Club, where the Royals shared a kiss last year. Meghan's old homes and schools in Los Angeles and a road close to the Sussexes Montecito estate. There are also plans, according to the Mirror, to expand the trip to Rosarito, Mexico, where fans can meet Thomas Markle. Not sure what Thomas is going to think of that. So there's no actual mention of going anywhere near where Harry and Meghan live, but they're going to drive down a road near where their mansion is. And this is where it becomes super cheeky. As fans caught wind of the Royal Celebrity Tour, many people took to social media to share their disapproval of the bus. Christopher Boozy, a tech entrepreneur who appeared in Netflix's Harry and Meghan. Oh, 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 independent. It was not Netflix's Harry and Meghan. It was Harry and Meghan's Harry and Meghan, of which they had full editorial control, which they 
sold to Netflix. Let's get this the right way around because I think I touch a nerve every time I ram this point home. And yes, he did feature in it independent. Yes, he did. That's a very good point and I'm so pleased that you raise that point. Uh, he expressed his concerns that the tour could open the couple up to harassment from tourists. His tech firm, Bot Sentinel, led research into online trolls targeting the Sussexes. That would be people like me, presumably in my dark cave, where I have no life other than to make money off the back of people who are just trying to survive and thrive despite the multi-millions despite the fame and the honours that were given by the British public to the royal family, where no one would give a toss who either of them were if they were not related to the late Elizabeth and the current King Charles. Let's get that straight. I mean, all the money Meghan and Harry have got, or at least all the money Harry's got, was that earned on an hourly rate, minimum wage at McDonald's? Or is that come from the Windsors, which is a hereditary taxpayer funded royal institution let's 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 just lay the paving stone shall we the foundations of where their money came from hmm? before Christopher Boozy starts accusing other people of making money out of them they have done nothing but make money out of their connections to the royal family and ride coat off their tails and titles all the way the harassment, says Boozy, of Harry and Meghan is escalating. And now these deranged people are taking their harassment offline while trying to profit off their harassment. He actually managed to get the word harassment in that sentence twice, as well as deranged. So I'm reading a newspaper article and I'm expressing and sharing my opinions on the internet. That would make me deranged. People want to go on a tour bus, which might go down a street near their mansion, a public highway of which they do not own and that's forbidden they are deranged anyone who drives down that road is deranged do they not know their place that the king and queen of Montecito can give permission or deny it who wants to ride down a public highway or go on a tour bus good grief who do these peasants think they are I hope you Americans are paying attention because apparently you're a monarchy at least in Montecito this is sick, he says. He wrote on his, his social network spoutable, God. <laughs> In response to the backlash, the official account for Trippening posted on X, formerly known as Twitter, that they removed the celebrity list, royal celebrity tour listing from their website. Quote, thanks for the heads up. We removed that tour from sale. Another quivering coward who's into cancel culture said from Trippening. Well done, Trippening. Not that I'm a Carl Larson fan, but I mean, you must bow to Harry and Meghan and Christopher Boozy, who featured on their Netflix docuseries of which they had full editorial control, which they sold to Netflix, who paid an inordinate sum of money because of connections to the British royal family. Let's just lay that out there persistently. Meanwhile, Larson launched a YouTube channel with Meghan's father called Remarkable Friendship in March 2022. In one episode, the photographer reportedly suggested that Thomas should buy a house next door to Meghan's mother Doria, which was on sale at the time. I actually remember him saying that and I remember thinking, what, what the hell are you trying to suggest? That doesn't sound creepy, stalky, weird. Oh yeah, I'll just go buy a house next door to someone who doesn't want to talk to me so I can spy on them over the garden fence. Yeah, I remember watching that episode because I did actually subscribe to that channel. And the thing I found at the time was um, I couldn't hear what either of them were saying properly because they didn't have microphones on. Speaking to Newsweek, oh here comes Newsweek again. About the Royal Celebrity Tour, Larson clarified that he had no intentions of going past Harry and Meghan's house, just where the actor grew up in Los Angeles. Quote, I want to have the tour be available where she grew up. We're going to go to Montecito, but just places they go to, restaurants they go to, he told the outlet. It's a custom tour, 
So if people want to go see other sites, that's what they're going to do. But we will not be going past Doria's house and we will not be going past Meghan and Harry's house. No, but Carl, are you going to use any public highways near their house? Because that is not allowed, according to Christopher Boozy. That would make you and anyone else, presumably, a deranger. We're deranged. I'm deranged. I'm speaking from my, my dark cave. I have no life. I am deranged. I'm, that's what they call us all. We're derangers, apparently. I'd never even heard the word before. I'd heard of people being called deranged, but deranger, you're a deranger, you're a deranger. It'll be derangingness or compassionateness or kindfulness or one of these other fucking crappy words, pardon my French, that they make this shit up. He added that the online backlash to the tour will not stop it from going ahead, saying, this is not going to be the end of the tour. Uh, then it goes on after the Harry and Meghan step down in 2020, blah, 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 with their two children. Uh, they wanted a choir to life as they continued to raise their four-year-old son and their two-year-old daughter, Lilibet, blah, blah, blah. The backlash to the Royal Celebrity Tour comes amid Harry's ongoing legal battle against a number of UK newspapers for an alleged invasion of privacy during the couple's bombshell sit-down interview with Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, we all remember that, wasn't that, when the whole British royal family are racist, the British public are racist, the British press are racist? Yeah, I remember that. But would Oprah have asked her to do that interview if she hadn't have married into the British royal family? Probably not. Did Oprah beg her to do an interview before she married into the British royal family and what became the Duchess of Sussex, my home county? No, she didn't. Probably because she'd never heard of Meghan before that. Oh well, I'm just being cynical, I'm sure. I'm sure had she not married Prince Di Princess Diana's and King Charles's youngest son, I'm sure she was on Oprah's to-do list and Oprah would definitely have interviewed her all about suits. But we all know she fucking wouldn't. Uh, in Oprah Winfrey in 2021, Meghan also spoke of her desire for privacy. I think everyone has a basic right to privacy. Basic. We're not talking about anything anybody else wouldn't expect. I'm not sure that I've ever demanded that nobody drive past my house on a public road or other roads near my house. I don't think I've ever done that. In fact, even when we were living in the boatyard in Shoreham and we had the Daily Mail stalking around in the boatyard taking pictures, we did film them doing it, but we never actually phoned the secretary of the Yacht Club and asked them to remove the Daily Mail. We just put up with it. Yeah. Also, I mean, I've never been to Wimbledon, but I'm sure if I did, I probably wouldn't insist nobody took pictures of me and nobody sat near me, so I'd have a right. Big part all to myself. But what was that bit again? I think everyone has a basic right to privacy. Basic. We're not talking about anything anybody else wouldn't expect. Yeah, Megan, I think you're talking, you're asking a lot. Yeah, I think we're talking about a lot more than basic and what other people would expect. Continuing on. However, the Sussexes have thought about privacy... Uh, Thoughts about privacy were infamously parodied in the recent episode of South Park. A royal spokesman for the couple. Oh, a spokesman for the royal couple. I was going to say a royal spokesman. A spokesman for the royal couple previously refuted claims that Harry and Meghan stepped back from the royal family because they wanted privacy. Hang on. So she said on Oprah, we're not talking about anything anybody else wouldn't expect. I think everyone has a basic right to privacy or privacy. But then their spokesman said they never wanted privacy. But when they release stuff in the newspapers, anybody who dares comment on it or critique it or tour buses, who, and there are a lot of tour buses in Hollywood that do these kind of tours anyway. I don't hear any other A-lister shitting their crap over this. Only, only these Christopher Boozy then everybody's deranged. So she puts stuff in a newspaper, but don't you dare bloody read it. God's sake, don't read it out loud. Fuck's sake, don't give an opinion on it. Unless, oh yes, the 11th commandment, I'm forgetting. 
Thou shalt worship Meghan Markle. Fuck off, Meghan. Oh, their statement announcing their decision to step back mentions nothing of privacy and reiterates their desire to continue their roles and public duties. What roles and public duties? They step back. That's the point. Right, anybody else confused to hell with this shit? Anybody else? Because, well, I just find it astonishing and arrogant. And if they either want privacy or they don't. If they don't want privacy, then stop complaining when people actually read articles and watch stuff. And then some people might have criticism. Some people might like it. Be private or don't be private, but make your bloody mind up. Now, Christopher Boozy, that reminds me of my blank sheets of paper. Now, I bought these for my daughter at Christmas and I'm really rather proud of them. So I'll show you these. I got her this. It's, um, it's not real emerald, that, but that is a seal. I don't know if you can see what that is. And these little beads are gold seal stuff. And there's a little crucible. Now, you put the, a blob of this stuff in and then they've got little tea lights. And you melt it. And then when you've written your letter, you put a seal on. And she hasn't used it. I don't know if she wasn't that into it. And I also got her for Christmas this which is a nib pen and it comes with a selection of nibs and a little bottle of quink and I'm coming to my point and yet another seal in fact it looks a lot like the Prince of Wales seal but it's not I think it's an arrow in the middle or something uh, or a fleur-de-lis I'm not sure but um, so I'm going to write to Prince William, as you all know, which I haven't got round to because I've been so busy in my dark cave wallowing in self-pity. But I shall be using this paper, this pen, to write Dear Prince William and make him aware and his team, if he is not already, about Christopher Boozy and him having featured on Harry and Meghan's docu-series of which they had full editorial control. Not Netflix, them. They chose to have him on that programme because I feel it is important that the Prince of Wales and the King of England are made aware that it's not just alleged bullying in the palace, that things have been happening on YouTube. <laughs> I've been so busy, I haven't even had a chance to catch up with the Duchess of Nile Sussex, but I will do, and we will be doing a collaboration, because I do recall somebody somewhere once said that the pen is mightier than the sword. And it is, and I'm going to prove that. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for indulging me. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts, opinions, and free speech in the comments below.